Welcome back to part two of building a box truck for one of you guys. Today we're going to build a pass through and a door bigger and better. If you guys are new here, my name is the Techno Barbarian and I am converting a U-Haul box truck into a tiny house. This is round two for me, the second one that I'm doing, and we're going to be keeping in line with the theme of this build series, which is not necessarily a detailed kind of walkthrough of every step-by-step -step process, because I've already recorded that in my first series. This is more so of an improvements, what I'm doing differently, how I'm doing it better. But just to briefly explain, the pass-through door is a door that allows the driver of the box truck to transition from the driving side of the truck into the living side of the truck without having to leave the truck at all. So... Think about pulling up to a hotel, truck stop, whatever it may be, and being able to stealthily and easily, conveniently, move between the living area and the driving area. Step one is gonna be for us to create our own custom door. I'm following the same general process that I used in my previous build, so you can always reference that if you need more detailed breakdown of what's happening here, but this is gonna be an insulated door, one inch foam insulation at the core of this door, surrounded by a sheet of plywood on one end and a thinner sheet of plywood on the other end. This is going to allow us to create a door with custom dimensions that will fit the maximum available space that we have without having to compromise looks or functionality. It's completely possible for us to get something like an RV door to install that, but it's not going to fit with the overall theme, visually speaking. It's also not going to be the proper size. You're never going to find something pre-made that's going to fit exactly what you wanted to, especially in a unique situation like this. The biggest difference between this door and the door in my truck is going to be, no pun intended, the size. This is almost twice the size of the door that I had in my truck. I don't remember exactly what the rationale was for creating the door in my truck the size that I did, but it's definitely a little too small for me to easily move in and out of. Now, I am a rather large individual, but for this build, I wanted this to be as comfortable and easy for my client to use as possible. We made the pass-through cutout quite a bit larger, and subsequently, we're going to be making the door quite a bit larger as well. One efficiency upgrade that I'm going with on this process is a two-in-one paint primer enamel. Instead of a two-part system for the cabinet and kitchen trim where I used the enamel primer and then the enamel, this shortens the build process and I find that this enamel performs just as good as the kitchen enamel. One of the things that I definitely did right in my build is using the low profile door handle and deadbolt system. So this not only makes it so that we can actually open the door wider before the door impacts whatever's in the way, but it keeps the usable space to the maximum inside the living area. So you're not bumping into any kind of door handles or anything while you're moving around within the space. I'm using the same deadbolt and door latch that I did with my build here, but I'm actually putting the deadbolt above the door handle. In this case, that was more of just an arbitrary choice. No particular reason for me doing that actually. The one thing that I did to make my life a little bit easier was paint the door before I installed the handle and the deadbolt. As we're assembling the rest of the door parts here, just want to give a special shout out to all of my followers and supporters over on technobarbarian.locals.com. That's my private community of van and box truck enthusiasts. We've got a lot of people over there building their own box trucks. If you guys are interested in building your own, asking me questions about one that you are building or anything related to box trucks, and conversions whatsoever feel free to hop on over there sign up and for a small subscription fee you get access to direct message me i guarantee you i'm a lot cheaper than any professional builder that you might find as a consultant Final step for the creation of the door here is simply to add the inner trim with my fancy new nail gun. Then we can move on to getting into that cutout. So I'm doing things a little bit differently here as well. In the previous build, I used aluminum angle for the upper and lower frames of the inner cabin side of the transition. And this of course was so that we have something easy and secure to attach our boot 
too. And the boot, of course, is that rubber piece that is going to be sealing off the transition from the outside air. One thing I learned with my truck is that there's never gonna be any actual water exposure in this area. So having a watertight boot is not necessarily the most critical thing. Not saying that we're not gonna be securing this and making it, of course, as airtight as possible, but it's not super critical if there isn't an airtight seal here. Instead of using angle to seal those ridges that pop out beyond the actual aluminum, we're gonna be filling those with spray foam and then trimming it flush. This is gonna allow us to put some framing or panels, wall panels on the inside of the cabin eventually. That will make everything look a lot nicer, kind of hide the depth changes in that wall and make everything a lot easier to work with in the long run. Moving on to installing the door frame itself, making sure everything was flush here. You might notice that the opening for the pass-through is actually a little bit bigger than the door frame itself. We made a little bit of a miscalculation when we were cutting that pass-through door. And then you might be wondering why we're not just building the door to fit the whole size of the pass-through that we did cut. Well, the answer is kind of twofold. Number one, it's not gonna be centered if we do that. And then number two, it's actually a little bit too wide. It's gonna hit an impact with the objects that we've got in the living room area. So we'll be covering that up with an additional piece of framing and some insulation. So that that's not gonna be a problem at all in the long run. With everything in place finally you guys can see that it's very easy for me to move in and out of this without any struggle at all making this quite a vast improvement over the pass-through door in my box truck as always thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one